Hello and welcome to another gas video, um, a gassive attack if you like, and uh, really looking forward to another set of five gas puzzles by Philip Newman, Clover and Sam Kappelman lines, the, the masters of gas who create the daily Sudoku channel and the gas puzzle that appears every day in it. So I am looking back half a month now. I am beginning to catch up a fraction. Not really. Um, but this one, this first one is from, this first one's got a history. Anyway, let me just run through the other things. Patreon, obviously, um, still got our uh, three times the Sudoku competition going on. On Discord, uh, there's all sorts going on, including the Daily Sudoku channel. Our merchandise and apps are there. I think there's been an update on the Thermo app, so that was not long ago. Check out all our stuff. It is great, great um, to have you engage with the channel, frankly. Now, what I'm going to do today is run through the rules of these five genuinely approachable Sudoku puzzles. That's what GAS is all about. So these are puzzles that anybody can do. If you're new to Sudoku, it just takes a little bit of perseverance and getting used to the rules. If you're not, you may whip through them quickly. And what I'm going to do is run through the rules, try and solve the puzzles, and then basically um, we'd see how my times did. And uh, there are some very nice correspondents who will let me know whether I get two hats for a very fast time on each puzzle one hat for a reasonable time and a dinosaur for just getting there in the end. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. Now, the first puzzle is a classic. Now, it is not just a classic though. Um, Philip Newman released, and I think we put it on Patreon, a pack of uh, Pi puzzles for Pi Day. Pi Day is uh, 314 in the American uh, nomenclature that is the 14th of March and that is because 3.14 is the beginning or indeed a rounding of pi. Now what Philip did in some of those puzzles at least and in this one is to use the digits of pi and if you look at this you will see that the digits of pi are strung across this grid in order 3.14159265 that's as far as I know it 3589 seven nine three two three eight four six two now i'm going to take philip's word for it that that is pi to however many decimal places that is i'm sure it is we are very lucky in sudoku that zero doesn't appear early in the pi string um, but it's an incredible feat i think philip has used a certain amount of computer power to come up with arrangements but do check this out this is actually a symmetrical arrangement of digits as well producing a valid classic Sudoku. I mean, I think this is amazing. Several of the other puzzles he produced did this. And I think in his pack, you can find some, what I would guess would be harder versions. Amazing that this is possible. I mean, Philip is an absolute genius in terms of what he thinks he can come up with and then doing it. So that's all backstory. I'm going to just try and solve it as a classic Sudoku and get through it because that's the way I ruin things. Um, now, quadruples by Sam Kappelman lines comes next. So numbers in circles must appear in one of the four cells around the circle. If a number appears more than once in a circle, then it must appear at least that many times around it. So you've got to get two ones and one two at least around here. Although it could end up being two ones and two twos. Although that would probably have a uniqueness issue. Anyway, um, then we would move on to ordered sums by Clover. Ah, now, the numbers in the cages are not normal killer totals, as you can tell from one there, for instance. The cages are ranked from the lowest to the highest sum. So cages with a one have the lowest, not necessarily unique, and indeed there's repeated cages with a one total out of all the cages in the grid. Cages with a two have the next highest. I think they go up to six as the highest one in this grid, unless I've missed a seven somewhere. Um, cages with the same total may or may not contain the same set of digits. The totals are not necessarily consecutive. Okay, well, fair enough. Oh, then lockout lines. Now, we have had one of these in GAS before, but it's a rule set that I'm surprised lends itself to GAS. So, in Sam's version, so the rules are two connected diamonds must contain numbers with a difference of at least four, and all digits on the line connecting them must lie strictly outside the range defined by those two numbers. For example, on a line whose diamonds contained 2 and 7, that would be possible there, 
the only permissible numbers would be 189 on that line. Um, numbers could repeat, although not in this puzzle because they all see each other. I suppose, yeah, no, I don't think there's any scope for numbers to repeat on lines. Oh, and then another classic, gas o'clock from Philip. And look, you can see the clock shape. It's three o'clock or quarter past 12 on this clock face. Wow. Oh, and look, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine going round the grid. Now we can't have 10, 11, and 12, so he goes back nine, eight, seven. That's brilliant. Oh, Philip is just ridiculously amazing. Anyway, do give these a try on the link of the video. I'm sure they also all solve elegantly because that is the hallmark of the gas series. Um, and I am going to start my gas of attack now. Oh no, hang on. I'm going to reset the clock each time so I know what my time is. Okay, let's get cracking. So there's a seven in one of those two cells. There's a two in the middle row. That's got to be there. Um, six in this box. Then we've got a one, four, eight, triple. Three in the row is there. That fixes that seven. I can do seven and nine in row four. That is a naked four now. One six pair, eight and five can go in. One is naked there and a two four pair. So that's a good start to the middle rows of boxes. Now what next? That can't be a four and that can't be a one. Bit of tidy up. Um, okay, we need, I don't know. I don't know where to go next for the verticals. Oh, this is a 9-5 pair. This is a 7-8 pair because of that 5-9 up there. Then this is a 3-4 pair, which I can write in. Oh, that's very nice. 2-6 there. The 6 sorts out 1-6 in the middle. Then we've got a 1-8 pair and 4-7, which can go in. So looking up at the top, let's look at this row. 8 can't be in either of those places, so it's definitely in one of those. Um, three is in one of those. Can have pen oh, four in row three. That's given. So now I can do four in the box there. That's five or eight by Sudoku. Eight is in one of those two cells. I worked that out earlier. Should have marked it. Seven, six, two, oh, one, four, three, nine. Three is in one of those. Honestly, I mean, there are a lot of deductions here that I don't know which ones are best to mark. Three, one, four. So two has to be up there. That might be helpful. No, two in one of those. Seven, somewhere there. Not that useful. Three, two in one of those two. Four, three, two, seven. No, I don't know. Eight. That is six or nine. Maybe it is this row. That's five or seven. Row two. Come on, give me something. There's a one in one of those two. Gosh. Ah, uh, no, I know two's there. One, two, three, eight, four. This is five, seven or nine, which is not getting anything done. Three and two down here. Oh, Philip has the knack of making these just a bit tougher. Or maybe in this case it's finding puzzles that are just a bit tougher. Four, seven, six, two, eight, nine. I don't know. If there's some, I'd be very surprised if there's some naked single still hanging out there now. But it's possible. This is the trouble with classics, though. You can get very hung up and not really know how to how to go about them. Like in a, if I knew this was going to be a hard classic, I would be kind of pencil marking cells to death, and maybe I'm going to have to do that. Five, six, or seven there. That sort of thing. Five, seven, eight here. Um, three, one, four. The trouble is, I'm just. Oh, four. There we go. That's not difficult. There's nothing difficult about that except me not spotting things. So that fixes two, three, and eight up in the top right. Good grief. How am I finding that difficult when I was on the track of fours at one point? 
It's just an embarrassment sometimes. That is six or eight. That's six or seven. Now, come on, eight. Eight. Oh, yes, that fixes seven and eight. That's what eight does. Uh, seven puts a seven here with an eight. So that's an eight, seven pair. Right, that fixes five and nine. Um, trying to translate into the downs. That's become a six, of course. Seven there. So in this column, no, not a useful column, surprisingly. One, four, three, nine. That's two or five. Column one, maybe that's got something for me. Eight, no, they could be at the bottom or row four. This is a, what is this? A one six pair that can be written in, honestly. This is a bad time. I'm not going to get two hats for this because there's nothing difficult about this puzzle. Nine in this row is suddenly fixed. Probably has been for a little bit. Um, that gets a two. That makes this a five and two. We get a nine in the corner. That is one eight or five, which forms a triple, which I'm sure I didn't have to use. Now, one six seven. That's the six. That's the one. That's the seven. This is eight, that's a five. I am finally finishing off and there was nothing that hard in it except me, or nothing that slow in it except me is maybe the way to express that. There we go, five minutes 41. And uh, that might still get the two hats, I don't know. Um, I think it was easier than I was finding it. I know that. Right, on to Sam's quadruples. Um, okay, let's restart the clock. And everything is doubled in this, isn't it? So that's a three, four pair, both sides of the line. That's a one, two pair. That's a five, six. We'd have a uniqueness problem if these double doubles appeared anywhere except on the intersections. I know that, it's interesting to me. Um, right, four appears around there, so that's a three. Um, Six appears around there, so that's a five. Uh, seven appears around there, so that's an eight. Maybe I can do this on each of these quads. One and two. There's got to be a one in one of those two cells for that one, one, two. So that's a two. Slightly more complicated version of that one. Um, now what? got to be a three here and a four that's got to be a three four pair this is three and something else um one two nine are the remaining numbers we've got to have that can't have an eight in so that's a seven eight pair and there's a seven here I might as well mark these things there's a three there so that includes a one and that is a one two pair is it the same here? Yes, that's the five, six pet, and this includes a five. So loads of symmetry going on here. I'm not sure I've really advanced. There's an eight in one of these cells now. Ah, oh, and it can't be in column three. So that's an eight. Um, three, four, and nine in the column. And in this column, seven, eight, and nine. And in this column, sorry, in that row, seven, eight, nine. In this column, five, six, and nine. Is it the central box? I need a two. Yes, that's got to be in the middle. So that's a nine, six pair. Now this is four and eight. Yes, I can do those. Okay, that was relatively, well, it was definitely the way through. That's not a six. We need an eight around this one. Yeah, seven, three, four, eight. That fixes seven and eight here, which resolves the seven. That can't be two or nine. That's a one. Ah, that's interesting. Two, nine, five, seven, eight, six, one, eight, seven. So one there. These are from two, five, and nine. That's not 
all that thrilling right. And that can't be 8, so the 8 in column 4 is there. The other two digits are 3 and 9. That means this isn't an 8 or a 9, I can suddenly see. So I should have stuck with symmetry. 7, 8, 2, 9, 1. So there's a 6 up here and a 4 down here. These aren't resolved. Ah, oh, there's a 6, 7 pair got to go in on this one and a 4 on this one. Right. And three is definitely in one of those cells. So, oh no, I was, yes, I can put eight here actually. Eight, four, two, six, seven. Maybe I can't do any more than that. I can fix this eight. Two, nine, eight, one, two. That must now be a six, seven pair. So that's a four, five pair. That fixes three and four. I've got a one and a two, but that needs a three. 1 and 2 in column 8, still to go. 3, 4, don't know much about the final column. That's now a 5, 7 pair with a 9 at the end of the row. That fixes this as a 5. That's 1 and 2 to finish the box. Now I've got a 3, 9 pair that I can't resolve. This must be a 1. I need a 1 in one of those two. This is a 2, 5 pair, so that's a 1. There's no 5 here. 9 has to be around the quad, which I had not seen. Would have helped. 2, 5 pair in this row. So that's a 4. Then I can put in 1, 6, 4, 3, 5 here. 9, 2, 5, 2. Then I've got 1 and 5 at the top. I've got that must be known. It's a 9. Uh, this is a 3-6 pair. I'm left with all these pairs at the top. Oh, I need a 6 around this quad. It's always a quad when I don't know quite what I'm doing next. 9-3, uh, they are resolved. That fixes 2-9. Now I've got 2 and 3 to go in there. So that's a 7. Now let's use the 7 across to, into the 6, into the 3, into 3 and 4. No, no, absolute bobbins. The three's over here. That's a pencil mark I've left in and not taken out, which I did deliberately, thinking it wouldn't confuse me, and it did. Um, so four and nine, and that does it. So again, five minutes, 46. But for that puzzle, I think that's a much more respectable time. Um, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, let's try this ordered sum. So the cages are ranked, basically. Okay, let's start now. These are all the same. Okay, so <clears throat> they add up to 21. They've all got to add up to 7 individually. This one must be a 3, 4, because it sees a 1, 5. That must be where 5, 2 is. This is 1, 6. So the two ranked cage is 7. So this has to be a cage making less than 7. Right, that's going to have to be a 1. That adds up to 5, so that's got to add up to 5. This has to add up to five as well. Uh, I didn't realize there were three ones there. The oh, there's another one. Um, that has to be one four now. Now in this box, 15, they all add up to 10. Um, so this one doesn't have an even number in it. So it's three seven. In fact, I can fill that in. Then two eight must be here. Actually, I can do that. Four six must be here. I mean, I'm really not going to have to spend time memorizing the ranks, I don't think. Eight, nine, three, two, and six there because of these helpful corner boxes. Right, nine there, we're left with 36. So five is worth 12. That's a seven five pair. That's the four eight pair. This is a nine three pair. We get a 1 here, a 6, 7, 9 triple, a 4, 8 pair. Ah, but the 1 is resolving this as 3, 2. Now, up here, 17, 21, 24 divided by 3 is 8. So that is a 3, 5 pair. Uh, this is not 6, 2, so 6, 2 is down there. 7, 1 is there. And I think all the corner boxes should be done now. Actually, that one four is a right in. Just a bit of Sudoku, I get nine and a six eight pair. 
I'd be surprised if I need to work out the cage totals anymore, but it might be the case. 6 and 3, that fixes 2 and 6. Uh, what have I got? 7 and 8. Now there's an 8x wing there and there, so I know that's not 8, which is quite helpful. This is a 249 triple. I know where 2 goes, but not 49. This is a 1 5 pair. Uh, we've got a 1 to go in the central box. 5, 3, 2, 1. Hmm, maybe I am going to have to still work out. Oh no, 6 goes there. Okay, that's not bad. This is 4, 7, or 9. 6, 8, 3, 1, 2. Okay, that has become a 9. So maybe I'm still not going to have to. That's 5 or 7. But this one is four, five, seven, or nine. So now, have we got a four cage? It adds up to ten. So there we go. Just needed to check that, I think, and uh, that should probably finish everything else. Oh no, maybe not. A six cage adds up to fourteen, according to that. So I did have to check a couple of the cage totals. I didn't have to actually work on ordering them or anything like that. I just had to check what was going on. So there we go, 3 minutes 22. I think those those corner boxes were a really very easy way in as soon as you spotted the the use of the secret and division by 3. Um, if you don't know the secret, it is that every box in a Sudoku adds up to 45. Right, let's have a look at lockout lines now. I've got to restart the clock. It's a long time since I did a lockout lines puzzle. Let's go. Oh, but five is in diamonds in all of them. So they've always got to have one or nine on the other end to obey the rule about being four away. Um, that's a one. So these are the locked out numbers. They are six, seven, eight, and nine. Up here, these again are six, seven, eight, and nine. The nine must be there. Not quite so sure about the six, seven, and eight. These are 1, 2, 3, 4, because they're locked out from 5 to 9. 2 goes there. <coughs> uh, these ones, can I work out? Yeah, there's... Whoa, no. There's got to be a 9 in this column. Now, I don't know what to do. Let's try and do some Sudoku somewhere. 8, 5, 7, 6, 3 and 9 in this column can be written in. That's a 1, 2, 4 set. So we've got 1 or 2 in the diamond there. This is 6, 7 or 8. Um, 3, 2, 5. No, let's have a look along this row. We can place 4 and 2. Ah, 3 is locked out. So this isn't a 1. That's a 9. And it's 1, 2 and 4 that are locked out. There we go. This is a six, seven, eight triple. We can place one and a four, five pair. That's an eight. And then we have a six, seven pair in the column and the box. Um, seven, one, four, nine, six. I'm just trying. That's an eight, five pair. Just trying to avoid doing lockout lines logic because I think classic logic is going to be quicker. Um, it got us the one, one, three, two, four, nine in the central column is going to have to be there. What have we got? Five, six, seven, and eight to go in the central column. Eight, three, five, one, nine. Oh, six, eight, seven. That's six or seven. So we know where eight goes in the row. <clears throat> this is now a two, four pair that can be written in. Sorts out the four, five pair. That is six or seven. Two nine one three four. I should really stop chickening out of looking at this lockout line. Right. What do I know about it? That is five, six, seven, or eight, and that's a one or two. So this can't be. We could put a one on the line if that was a two, but otherwise this is going to have to allow nine and eight at least. So it must be below eight. This is six or seven given the box. Yeah, I reckon that's got to be right. I hope my logic is right there. As I say, I haven't done a lockout lines puzzle in a long while. Four in the row has to be there. This is a one nine pair. Nine can go on that line. That's fine. This has become a one. 
which is actually quite restrictive. I don't think this can be 7 anymore. That has to be 6 with 9, 8, 7 on the line. Yeah, I think that's right. This is a 2. That's a 7. Let's just do the Sudoku and things may fall into place. That is impossible. No, that's a 5. Thank goodness it's not impossible. Uh, this is 6, 7 or 8. That has, okay, 7, 8 pair, 9, 2, 1, 4, 3, 5 and 6 to place. The 3 must be there. That's a 5, 6 pair. That's resolving 8. Um, this is a 2, 4. Yeah, they're all done. That fixes the 1, 4 pair up there. This has become an 8. Okay, that fixes the things I was worried about not being able to fix before. And now I think we are finished. 7 and 5. Um, this 6, 7 pair are done. And they fix 6, 7 up here. And now I can do 5 and 6 in the middle. There we go. So let me just pause. Okay, a reasonably timely door buzzer for once, just as I was finishing a puzzle. And I shall move on to Gas O'Clock by Philip. And this is another classic. So let's restart the clock and see how we do. Okay, looking down these very populated central rows and columns, but actually nothing obvious to me there. Nine in the middle, then that's a two seven pair. That is three or eight, that's one or three. Oh, eight in the central column, it's done. Um, eight, four, six, nine. That's got to be a three five pair, interestingly. Uh, 31945, that doesn't work symmetrically over the other side. Okay, so let's use the 3-5 pair in the column, if we can. Yes, we get a naked 6 up there. 2 is in one of those cells. That's 1 or 8 as a result. Now that's 6, yes, we get a 6 here. 6 in one of those cells. 3 and 2 come down here somewhere. These are That's a naked 7, I think. It is. 7, 6, 1, 8, 2. One of these is a 3. It's that one. That's not a 5. So we need a 5 over this side. Looking down the column again, that's 1 or 8. That's not actually getting anything done. That 3, though, no. 6 puts a 6 in one of those cells. Eight, seven, nine must be up here and therefore down here. Six must also be here. That's another similar pair. Um, now, how what's that going to give me? Three, six, nine, four, one. Um, I know there's a five now in one of these two cells. Three, six, four, nine, one. No, let's try this. That's two or eight. That's two or eight as well. That's a weird pair. So then five and seven in the other cells are. Ah, this can't be six. That was what it was giving me. So I get six there, which actually doesn't do much else. That is one or two in the column. Six, eight, seven, looking along the bottom then. Ah, this is a four, five, nine triple, I reckon. Making this two or three only. Seven, eight. That is also, no, two, three or eight. Oh, one in this column is a total giveaway. Right. So then we get one in one of those two positions. In the box, eights in one of those two. Eights also in one of those positions. Twos in one of those. Two, three, eight, triple, one, six. Sevens in one of these. These offset positions are not actually very helpful um, until I get something else. That's three or five. One, three or five there. Three, nine, six. That can't be a nine. Three, nine, six. Oh, bother. One breakthrough away here. That is one or four. This one, 3986715, that's two or four. But this, oh, well, it sees a five, six, nine, five, two, eight, three, one, four, or seven. 
No, but I don't think... Yes, this is the only place for five in column one. Good grief. Okay, five there. That puts seven here. Not there. That puts seven in one of these cells, and I think that means this is a naked two now. It does. That can't be two. Come on, two, do something. I don't think it does. Bother. Right, three in one of those, five in one of those. These are from four, five, nine. Just, it's a sort of weird double, triple. That probably should be telling me something about them, but I'm not smart enough to see what it is telling me. And some six, two, three, eight. That is also four, five, or nine. So it's a triple in this column. Maybe that's what it's telling me. That's a naked eight, therefore. Crikey, that is nice logic. Six, seven pair there, that's an eight. Now that eight is giving me an eight in box one. That's fixing the eight to one triple there. That makes it three, one in the central column. Um, five, two, nine, three, that can't be one anymore. So one in the first row, first column is there. This is four or nine again, part of another four, five, nine triple. Three, seven, six. That's two, four, or nine. Five, two, nine, three, six, five. This has become a four. This whole box is done. That must finish the first column. I don't know why I'm calling it first column rather than column one today. Seven and one are done there. Actually, three and five was never a pair. That was a blinking given five. Honestly. Now somebody's trying to get in behind me. It's really annoying, mate. Um, right, I shall finish in a moment, and we will be rid of that noise. Sorry if you can't hear me now. Wow, that is the most aggressive hammering we've had here at all. And it continues. Right, I do apologise about the noise. I am about to finish this gig. Well, that is the gassive attack today, is the noise. Wow, the man is going mad. I'm going to shout at them in a moment. Okay, there we go. That is the fifth one. I didn't spot what my time was. Sorry, I flicked off it immediately. Oh no, is it 6.14? No, it couldn't have been that long. Was it? Maybe I didn't start the clock. Maybe it was that long. Great puzzles anyway. Sorry about the noise. I'm going to stop the recording now. See you later. Bye for now.